I'd like this to take this over for your two minute closing or use this as your two minute closing. You actually are in charge of what you say. Um, what is the single most important quality of an effective legislature? If you had the power to get one bill passed or one bill killed, what would it be? Two minutes each. Please, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll start the way we did in the beginning. Jim, J.P., Victoria, Pam, and Charlie. Well, I'll, I'll start with this. Uh, I was out on the, I was up advocating one day, and I was working uh, this one particular bill, and I ran in, to, I needed to talk to Randy Freeze, and he came out, and I think it was the, uh, Somebody, some group had a lunch going on and Randy was out getting his plate of food. And I said to Randy at the time, he was thinking about running against uh, Senator Flake for the U.S. Senate. And Farley had already said he was gonna run for governor. And I said to Randy, I said, Randy, I said, I really need to talk to you and I talked to him about a bill. And then I asked him, I said, you know, um, if you run for the U.S. Senate and Steve Farley runs for governor, who's going to replace you guys? And he said, well, you're already doing the work. <laughs> so that's kind of started this whole thing. But you know, uh, one bill that I was very proud that I was very instrumental in getting killed was uh, was a bill that the governor wanted and he had uh, Heather Carter in the house. He had her start running this bill. And it was designed to take all of the boards, all the licensure boards, and I happened to have once set on the Arizona Board of Respiratory Care Examiners and I was appointed by Governor Napolitano. And that's a board that gives the license to respiratory therapists. But he wanted to take and take all of these boards and put them under the director of the Department of Health that he appointed. And this director was going to have the authority that if they didn't like the way one of the boards voted, they could remove some of the board members that voted that way and have them replaced by the governor. And they were all going to be put in this one building so that he could oversee all of these different boards. Well, if you think about that, all he was gonna do was herd all the cattle in and then ship them off to slaughter. So I worked with Senator Barto and we got it decreased enough to where the bill was just, he said, just forget it. Don't even run it anymore. We got it. Thank you. What does it take to run a effective legislature? I take inclusion and Something else that I find important is being able to find common ground. We don't see that right now. But something that I find to be on the cusp of losing, that I find very important for Tucson and Southern Arizona, is keeping our tax increment financing district, also known as Real Labor, because the economic impact it's had over the past five years <coughs> have been incredible. And I think that we can extend these districts to other parts of town as well. What would happen if other smaller cities were given this tax abatement for two years over a five-year plan and they have to pay it all back? Sorry, it's three years and then they have to pay it back in two years. But it spurs on incredible reinvestment in your communities. I remember living downtown five years ago and it was scary. Places would close at sundown. There were people experiencing homelessness everywhere. And now, with downtown Tucson, they've helped get those people into housing and get the medical care. If we want to grow and be more attractive, we need to make the places that will bring in talent. The way to do that is by making it competitive enough for people to invest in Tucson. Because the streetcar was great, but now we don't have Steve Farley. So what are we going to do to champion that growth to make sure that Broadway will be incredible, to make sure that we finish the phases by 2026 of Grant Road, even though that's extremely long. How are we going to develop? We should not be intimidated by growth too soon. And that's what I would like to take with us to the capital. Because how else are we going to retain a higher percentage of our graduates from U of A? We only keep 18% of them. 
I sit on the board of Tucson Professionals. How are we going to develop and attract and retain people who are talented in this new economy that we live in if all we're doing is using old time thinking? one thing, that that is impossible and it doesn't make any sense anyway because when you're a legislator, you better be better, you better be very good in a lot of areas because it comes at you like water through a fire hose when you're trying to take a drink out of it and that is impossible. So you've got to know stuff. So one thing I want you to know about me, I am a candidate, I am a woman, I am an activist, I am someone who walks her talk. I not only showed up, I was one of the speakers in the first Women's March in Tucson. I showed up at the one in Phoenix. I started the NOW chapter, National Organization for Women chapter here in Tucson. I have been to the March for Our Lives. I have marched with the, what was the, the Red for Ed several times. I go to things. You know where I stand on the issues that you care about because I'm out there and I'm hearing from you and I know what's important to you. I know what you care about. I listen to you. I will always listen to you. I will be there. I will fight this fight for you. I will fight this fight with you. And one of the things that I want you to know is just like Steve Farley has done every week, every month, the entire years that he has been in office. Once elected, I will start the Steele Report. The Steve Farley's Farley Report has been so invaluable as a source of information and, and education on these important issues. So I will be doing that. And I'm going to take a, a cue from, from um, my friend Pamela Howers, Representative Howers, does hers in video. So I will be doing a Farley report, make it a steel report, with Vivian. Thank you. I swear we got a bondage thing going on here. <laughs> 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 wrapping this part around both sides. <laughs> and so, yes, <laughs> there's the tweet for you guys. Uh, so, it, again, picking one area is, is hard. One of the, what I focus on being up there is on public health and on protecting uh, workers uh, and protecting patients in particular. As I mentioned earlier, I was uh, I played a big part in the opioid bill that was passed and also dental therapy and community health workers. And so these are all things that are going to help uh, the health of, the, of Arizonans and be workforce development also because community health workers and dental therapists are new job descriptions that are now approved in the state of Arizona. I also wanted to mention that I was the one on budget night at 3 o'clock in the morning who put a, up an amendment that says let's spend that $55 million of federal money on the child care tax credits. I had already had a bill to increase child care tax credits and all we had to do was change the amount to $55 million and the, and the Republicans didn't want to do that. Uh, I also think that we should be helping uh, grow our own local small businesses in Tucson. You know, our, Tucson is the Athens of the West. I keep telling you this, and we could be that place because we have such a strong community for arts and music and culture and food and science. You know, if, if we played to our strength and tried to grow our own local small businesses rather than giving money away to big corporations that are headquartered elsewhere, we could have a much stronger and a much more diverse economy in Tucson. And as many of you know, my suggestion for growing local small businesses is to work with Local First Arizona and to partner with community banks and a state public bank to offer low interest loans to college students to get them out of debt to, uh, and also to grow local small businesses. Because 
The banks are not lending, and to grow our local small businesses in Tucson, they need capital. And this is how they could get capital to expand. And again, uh, I think that, uh, that this is a, a crossover issue. There are many uh, Republicans in the legislature who want to grow small businesses, and many of them vote against the corporate tax cuts. And so, again, we should be growing our own and we should be helping our local small businesses thrive and survive and in addition to helping the people. So, more than I Well, I'm going to make an educated guess here as to what Randy might say. Uh, with that caveat, it's an educated guess. Um, many of you might not know, but Randy is a, is a product of public education from kindergarten all the way through medical school. Um, and so I think if we're looking at the question of one bill passed or one area passed and one killed, I think Randy would really want to make our public education system whole. Because when you have children of every ilk, every socioeconomic structure, uh, race, color, creed, whatever, when you, when you provide them with strong, thorough public education or education through the public schools, you are going to impact the community for the rest of their lives. Uh, they will be happier in their jobs because they'll have better jobs, they'll be less violent because people are happier. Um, so I think that, that Randy would really say that the foundation of what he would want for this community is to have a really robust, fully funded public education system.